you play Captain Marvel for? I don't know. I don't know. Does anyone want me to do it again? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Man, it must be a tough gig to be one of the dozen or so people that are still hardcore fans of the MCU these days. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that apart from one or two marginal successes like Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Marvel has been a brand in decline for some time now, and the process only seems to be accelerating as we near the end of what's turned out to be a pretty dismal year for superhero movies. Ant-Man 3 was an unmitigated disaster, losing hundreds of millions of dollars for the studio, while Secret Invasion, a big budget Disney Plus show featuring what used to be one of the coolest characters in the franchise, was met with resounding indifference. Which brings me not so neatly along to The Marvels, one of the least anticipated MCU movies of the past several years, and the film that's going to round out a disastrous 2023 for Disney. I mean, right from the beginning, it was pretty obvious that this movie didn't have much to work with, handcuffed as it was to a main character that was once touted as the new face of the Avengers, until Marvel realised that she was about as popular with fans as barbecue ribs at a vegan restaurant. Hence the reason she's barely appeared in anything in the past four years. It's a bit like clogging up your friend's toilet after a dodgy kebab. There's only so long you can stall them before they demand to know what the hell you're doing in there. Yeah! <laughs> Attempts to dilute the problem by crowbarring in two other characters that most people either didn't know or didn't care about only served to highlight how pointless, directionless and passionless the whole endeavour felt. Then came the delays, the revisions, the reshoots, the rumours of tension and explosive conflicts on set, the disastrously bad test screenings, the hiring of an inexperienced director with a grand total of one mid-budget movie to her name who made baffling statements like, this movie is going to be totally different from the rest of the MCU because it's really wacky and silly. Or, sometimes you'd be in a scene and you'd be like, what the hell does any of this shit mean? <laughs> No kidding, Nia. I often find myself asking the same thing with pretty much every Marvel project these days. The difference between us is that I'm not supposed to be directing one of these fucking things. But hey, who knows? Maybe the film would turn out to be a big hit at the box office. I mean, shit man, the first one made over a billion dollars, so there's no reason the sequel couldn't equal that. Oh. So, the box office projections have come in for the Marvels, and they're not looking good. In fact, that's putting it mildly. If they're correct, then this movie's got about as much chance of turning a profit as a holiday park in Chernobyl. According to Box Office Pro, the Marvels' early box office projections are 72% worse than Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, a film which went on to make less than $500 million globally, nowhere near its break-even point. Its opening weekend is expected to generate between 50 and 75 million domestically, less than half of what Captain Marvel did. Pre-sales are down 69% behind Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and 72% behind Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Not exactly good news. And it's not like this was a cheap movie to make either. In fact, the final production budget comes in at just shy of $275 million, making it easily one of the most expensive movies in MCU history. I mean, with CGI this good, what else could you expect? Expect. <laughs> just as a little comparison though, I'd like to point out that The Creator was made on a budget of just 80 million. Either way, when you factor in the costs of marketing, promotion and distribution, you're looking at close to 800 million dollars just to break even. SON OF A BITCH! <laughs> Something tells me this movie is not going to make 800 million dollars. I mean shit man, they'll probably save a bit of money on the press tour because it's looking increasingly likely that the actor strike could drag on until the end of the year, but something tells me that's not going to be enough to tip the scales in this case. But drinker, you rapacious rapscallion, I hear you say. Barbie was all about female empowerment just like Captain Marvel and that film went on to be the biggest hit of the entire year. Surely the Marvels will ride the girl power wave all the way to the bank just 
just like its predecessor. Well, advocate for the devil, I'd pump the brakes on that kind of enthusiasm if I were you. Regardless of its artistic merits, of which there are few in my opinion, Barbie was a huge hit because it successfully tapped into the elusive female market in a way that Marvel never can. Taking the quintessential female toy that almost every woman in the Western world has played with at one time or another, and adapting it into a movie told from an unapologetically feminine perspective. It worked because it captured an audience that's been largely starved of content tailor-made for them for almost 10 years now. What studios have tried to do instead is to bend other genres and franchises around them rather than making stuff that's tailor-made for them in the first place. For example, Marvel's core audience is, was, and always will be male. <laughs> Yeah, I know a few people are gonna lose their minds because I said that, and yeah, I know there's still plenty of girls out there who enjoy superhero movies too, but when you get right down to it, the bulk of Marvel's fan base is composed of men, and their increasingly ham-fisted attempts to pander to a female audience over the past few years hasn't won them the new fans they expected. All it's really done is alienate the ones they already had, because they're no longer giving them what they want. That is why more and more of their movies are failing. That's why nobody gives a shit about their TV shows anymore. That is why the Marvels was doomed before they even shot a single frame. Not just because of the unpopular main characters, not just because of the inexperienced director or the bloated and ridiculous budget, not just because of the general malaise around superhero movies as the genre enters its twilight years, but because they already pushed away the very people who once supported them so fervently. They insisted on making more and more projects that they felt audiences needed, instead of listening to what they actually wanted. And to be honest, I've got absolutely no sympathy for them, because they brought this on themselves. They sowed the very seeds of their own failure, and well, now it's time to reap their rewards. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.